hello and welcome to my channel. It has been a very, very long time since we did any sort of cooking, so we are now in our kitchen ready to do more three ingredient recipes. I actually have a huge list of three ingredient recipes that I want to just get through, mostly because it's just an excuse for us to eat it because I'm like, oh, Cal, we need to film. That's most of the reason, to be fair. So I'm very excited to say that today we are going to be making three ingredient Oreo fudge. I'm very excited for it. Same. I was telling Mitch that I actually don't think I've eaten a physical Oreo before. So I might steal a bit of one yeah. for a bite. The title, <clears throat> CPK tries his first Oreo. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Not so, clickbait. <laughs> it really is the truth. He's a 28 year old man who has never tried a biscuit. Mm, shameful. <laughs> it really is. So since all you guys are avid viewers of our cooking show, and I know you all want to cook along at home. Of course. <laughs> here is a breakdown of the three main ingredients that you're gonna need and some sneaky little extras and utensils that we'll also be using throughout the video. So the first thing you're going to need is, of course, Oreos. You will need 14, which conveniently is exactly how many you get in the 154 gram pack, hopefully available where you live. One tin of sweetened condensed milk. And the last ingredient is 400 grams of white chocolate. We decided to get it as Milky Bar buttons, just give us the easiest way to do it. We don't have to crush it or anything. And the good news is that these are actually 103 grams each, meaning that there is uh, 12 grams of chocolate up for grabs, spare. So get these to treat yourself. So obviously the bags are only 100, so we have four bags of the Milky Bars to melt. We're gonna be using a square baking tray for putting the fudge into. This is where we're gonna leave it to uh, set and cut it out of. You'll also need baking paper or parchment paper to line the baking tray up so then everything doesn't stick to the tray. The final thing we've got is uh, some little Ziploc sandwich bags and we're gonna be using this garlic press and we're gonna put the Oreos in here and we're gonna beat them with the garlic press because you have to crush them up. Other accessories will also work, but these are our weapons of choice. Before we get started with anything, because Cal says he's never actually had an Oreo biscuit and only had it in like McFlurry and ice cream and all that stuff. Yeah. It's time. To try one? Yeah. I'm not gonna eat it all because we need 14, so. Hmm, that ice cream's nice though. Yeah, of course, okay. It's just like a custard cream. I'm personally offended. I'd eat it again. Step one is to actually crush the Oreos. We're gonna put them in this Ziploc bag and then crush it with the garlic press. Beat them up. Like we said, we're going to put all of these Oreos in this Ziploc bag. So, all 14. Aha, vacuum sealed. And now we're going to crush them a little bit. So obviously with this type of recipe, it really depends how big you want your like cookie pieces to be. So we've decided to go with like this type of texture because I like a bit more crunch. It's more so crunch. So I think this is what we're gonna go with. Step two is to pour the condensed milk and the milk chocolate that we're gonna be melting into a pot and give it a melt for a little while. Okay, so it says that it needs to go on a low heat. So what do you think? I was three. Gonna, I was three. Like two. Okay. Two or three. Low heat. Low heat. Mitch thinks low heat is five out of ten. Out of nine? That's quite low. It's over half. So here we are. We're going to open up the. Oh my good. Yum. So we're going to pour it into this pot. Ooh. And now it's time to add in all of our chocolate. Uh. That's exciting. So obviously this is so much easier because you don't have to like chop up any chocolate or anything. So I would suggest getting it in buttons or chocolate chips. The final bag, Woo. there we go. Now we're going to stir it all in and melt the chocolate. So our aim here is to keep stirring it because with the heat it will start to get harder to stir and will start sticking to the bottom and we don't want it to burn and we're just going to keep on stirring until it's all melted and has a nice thick consistency. I can't tell you how difficult this is to stir. Let it be known. This is very difficult. Ooh. An arm workout. A big arm workout. 
Condensed milk and the white chocolate is now fully, fully melted. So we are now on step three, which is to add in all the crushed Oreos and mix them in together. So what we've actually done is we left a few Oreos in the bag to sprinkle on top for some decoration for later, so we thought that would make it look really nice. Because we are artistes. Yep. Step four is going to be to line our baking tray because all we have to do basically now is pop it into the baking tray, but yep. we don't want it to stick to it. So we have some uh, baking stuff here and we're going to go ahead and line it. We're going to just start pouring now. So this could technically be the next step, but we're including it as one step. Oh, it looks unreal. get it out of the pan. It's very heavy. Now we have Alrighty. it out of the pan. Now it's about yeah. leveling it out, which is still going to be very hard. So I'm just kind of pushing it down to spread it. And it is slowly going. Everything is ready to go. So basically, if you have the patience, you can leave it at room temperature to set, or we're just gonna put it in the fridge for a couple of hours, so maybe yeah. like two. It's gonna take us two hours, Yeah. but you're gonna see it super quick. True. Whilst that is in the fridge, I'd like to say a massive, massive thank you to FlexiSpot. FlexiSpot has kindly sent me this portable workstation. It's normally actually in the office, but I wanted to showcase it on this bigger table. I love how it has this drawer so I can organize all my stuff. The desk that I work on right now in the office actually has no drawers, so this is super helpful. It also comes with these really cute magnetic pins, so I have reminders on there and this little picture of me and Cal. It also has this really handy UV disinfection light at the bottom of it so it can keep my mouse clean or whenever I want to use a separate keyboard. And I really like the USB cable for my phone charger. That's super handy, so everything's in one place. Sitting my Mac on top of it keeps it at eye level, so when I'm editing for long periods of time, I'm not straining my neck. Genuinely, since using it, I've seen a massive difference in my posture because I'm not slouching so much. Again, thank you to FlexiSpot. I'll leave a link in the description to this product if you want to check it out. And now, let's see how the fudge is doing. Okay, so we are back and it has been 90 minutes in the fridge. Obviously, if you wanted it to go a bit faster, then you could have put it in the freezer, but we're happy with it in the fridge. Yeah. Here it is. Look at that, it looks real. Like, we've actually done it. I think it looks really good. So we are going to cut it up now and then try, try it. it. I think that you would have smaller ones of this. I don't think you'd have it quite as big as brownies. So I originally was cutting it three by three. Now I've made the decision to cut it a few extra bits smaller. So I'm finally done. My fingers and hand are aching, but we have 30 little chunks of Oreo white chocolate fudge. We've now cut it up. You heard the man, we have about 30 pieces in here. So all that's left is to try it and it smells really good, so I think it's going to be good. Yeah, I hope That's so. That's normally how it works out, right? We were just saying how sweet it's going to be. We do know yeah. that, which is why we went for smaller chunks. Yeah, like tiny, tiny little like bite-sized ones. Almost bite-sized, yeah. So. You know, and obviously we're not going to eat all of this in one go. Well, I'm not. <laughs> wow. Cheers. Very sweet. Oh my god. That's so good. It's actually so good. Holy moly. Yeah, these are really nice. I guess I'm gonna have to Google how well they'll keep for. I don't know how many days. Oh no. The brownies said like yeah. two weeks or something, yeah. but we just smashed those in like five days. I'm currently editing this whilst eating some fudge. And I think the main reason why I like it so much is because it reminds me of the Hershey's Cookies and Cream chocolate bar. It tastes just like it, but thicker. When I was younger, this was my favorite chocolate bar. So maybe the taste is just really nostalgic. Consistency is really good. Mm. Actually, not overly sweet. No. I mean, honestly, I'd recommend it. Mm. For sure. I'd say try it. And realistically, we had some fun with it and we're messing around. If you really wanted to blast this out, you could do it quite quickly, I think. Yeah. The, the longest part is just having it in the fridge or freezer. But mm. even then, 90 minutes and we have 30 little snacks. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do end up trying it, let me know mm. if you liked it or not, or if you don't like white chocolate, then did you try it with something else or did you just not even want to try? <laughs>
Wow. Did you look at it and think, no? Did you not even want to try? Overall, I would give these a 10 out of 10, not only on taste, but also like fun to make, quick, easy three ingredients. Like mm. we cannot go wrong with three ingredients. Next week's video is going to be another try on haul. So you'll get to see some outfits that I've chosen. Don't know if they're gonna look good yet, but I guess we'll find out. So until then, I will see you when I see you.